Ya le bajó la voz porque le dijo quién es. Welcome to Hoobie's Garage, the dumbest Lamborghinis interrupted me. The dumbest auto channel in all of YouTube. That was the immobilizer. And yes, this is the last time that we will have my iconic dumb, dumber, and dumbest trio together. I'm selling off one of my Lamborghinis because you really can't have too much of a good thing. And I feel like with the way things are going, maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to have a little bit of cash in the bank, but really it's just too many cars. Three Lamborghinis is too much, but they can also get a lot of attention, good and bad, which led to the very first time I have ever been threatened to be arrested. And it's for the silliest, dumbest thing ever. So let's get into that story as I'm harassed by a fly. So I took my Lamborghini Murcielago to the Automobilia Moonlight Car Show on Douglas, a huge Wichita tradition. It was a model car store when I was a kid that I would go into and dragging Douglas is sort of the thing to do in Wichita. My parents would go and drive up Douglas and meet people before smartphones, you know, everybody's buried into their face now. So it sort of recreates that. And Van Gogh, the guys who restore a lot of my cars, beautiful, amazing detailers and painters, you've seen some of their fabulous work. Uh, one me to bring a car down to show in their booth, which I thought, well, that's totally fine. I hadn't been to Automobilia and had a car there in years, so I brought my 06 Orange Murcielago down. Now, the show goes until midnight, but when I've gone in years past, including the very first time I saw my 1949 Cadillac, brought my little baby daughter at the same time, I would leave early. I wouldn't stay until midnight when it gets more rowdy, the crowd gets kind of drunk because all the bars are down there. I would just sort of leave around 10 o'clock, and they were totally fine with that told me it would be fine they were sponsors for the show and well that's exactly what I tried to do so I started up my Mercy Lago right there didn't rev it despite people wanting me to pulled out maybe 20 or 30 feet at a crawl slower than a baby could crawl to work my way out because there's a lot of crowds around and I'm drawing even more of a crowd because it's a bright orange Lamborghini and a female police officer comes up to me leans into me and says what do you think you're doing? And honestly, I thought she was joking. So I smiled at her, said, I don't know. And uh, she was not joking around. She decided to lay into me and tell me that what I was doing, leaving the car show early was dangerous and illegal. And I could be arrested and cited for reckless driving. Now throughout the evening, I'd seen cars leave throughout at least 50 cars leave. I told her that I didn't realize I was doing anything wrong, saw these cars leaving. And she looked at me like I was a total idiot. And then again, threatened to cite me for reckless driving and arrest me and impound my car for pulling out at a crawl into a crowd and was increasingly getting more and more irate. So me as the civilian has to de-escalate this cop who is clearly losing her temper. The way her temperament was, the way she treated me was not professional. And I don't think she has any business being a police officer personally, considering how worked up she was over me just pulling out and leaving a show. And she even insulted me. She said, I'm sure you're very proud of your car and I hope you can afford it. And then, well, continued to threaten me up until this is where actually the video picks up because it's kind of funny. You see the picture. I'm surrounded by a bunch of car YouTubers. I have Tavarish in the passenger seat. He came to pick up a car in Kansas to drive back to Florida. He's witnessing all this in shock and all. There's Elliot Alvis in the background, 100% Jake. They're looking on in total disbelief as this woman comes totally unglued. And I'm thinking, okay, I better submit to this woman's authority because that's clearly what she wants me to do. So I slumped down and asked her what she would like me to do right now. And she shrugged her shoulders. I asked her again. She shrugged her shoulders again. You've already pulled out. You've already ruined it. You've already endangered society. And then finally, another officer or her supervisor witnesses all this, witnessing her as a crowd surrounds to see this scene that's making her and police officers look really bad before she leaves in a huff. You can see it in the video. She leaves in the huff. And the last thing I hear is her muttering some sort of insult under her breath as this supervisor or co-officer tells her, hey, we're here to educate. We're here to educate, meaning uh, tell people that you're doing something wrong. Tell them the rules, but uh, don't threaten them obviously. But anyway, that's story time over my first time ever being threatened to be arrested. And I'm sure that's partially because of this bright orange Lamborghini getting all 
kinds of attention, good and bad. They see this car, they assume that I am up to uh, no good, not obeying traffic laws and all that kind of stuff. My very first week of owning a Lamborghini, actually, I got my first speeding ticket, which was well-deserved. I was going, you know, 15 over or something like that on a country road, got caught by a county sheriff, paid the ticket, and I made a small donation to their survivor's fund for the spouses, widows of fallen officers, but, you know, that wasn't a big deal. It was just a speeding ticket. This one was, was a little more scary, but I had already decided at that point before the car show that I needed to get rid of one of these Lamborghinis. The problem is I couldn't decide which one because I love all three. All three of them have been very well sorted by the car wizard, uh, but it came down to one big factor. So let's talk about that as we drive the car that I'm selling. Well, we'll drive the Countach first, but I'm actually, I'm not selling it. Oh, they're really tight together here. All right, did some Lambo yoga, and well, that does not sound very healthy, unfortunately. And yes, battery is uh, uh, quite dead on this thing, which is uh, typical. I didn't have it on the battery tender because I thought I'd be driving it, and then a month and a half goes by, I haven't driven it, and the battery is too low to start. Uh, so typical for me, Lambo yoga, to get out. Uh, I haven't driven the Countach very much. So you would think I would sell this thing, especially considering I'm not using it. It is quite valuable. Of the three cars, it is the most valuable one of the three, uh, but it is the one that I dreamed after owning the most. I mean, my dad hung a poster of a Countach over my crib when I was a baby, a poster he had in college. So obviously I'd always wanted one of these and I know if I sell it with as expensive as they are, I would never ever buy another one. I was able to buy this and the Diablo on the same day from the same person for a very, very low price considering what they're worth. Still, all the money I ever had in the world, pretty much what my old house was worth, the first Hoobie's garage. But now uh, this one car is worth about twice what my old house is worth. Absolutely insane, but it's also why I'm kind of scared to drive it. Driving something that's worth more than, say, a really nice house uh, is very daunting, especially a Countach with this pearl white paint that is very rare, all original. If I got a scratch, it would be pretty much impossible to touch up, so I'd have to repaint the thing. It's also not very comfortable. I don't fit in it all that well. I call it Lambo Yoga. I have to sort of contort myself into the thing to even fit, and I don't fit all that well. But once I'm in, and driving it, it is amazing to drive. It is so much fun. The gear shifts are great. The power is fantastic for its time. And of course, it just looks absolutely bonkers. And since it's probably a great investment, the value will keep going up and up and maybe a million dollar car someday. Uh, I'm just gonna hang on to it and see what happens. Use it on very special occasions, otherwise, just look at it. But I don't want my entire collection to be a bunch of garage queen decorative things that I don't use like so many collections, which is why when you have this many, one needs to go. And it's definitely one of these two. Um, anyway, it's gonna be one of these two, but we'll drive both since I know they'll both start. And I guess we'll start with the Diablo VT Roadster since it is kind of blocking in the Murcia Lago. Definitely the prettiest of the three cars in my opinion and really well thought out and put together. The Roadster top on this, you can see it's one piece carbon fiber. It clips onto the rear bonnet and then you can clip it right onto the top. So it looks beautiful in every position. Unlike the really stupid toupee over here with the Murcia Lago, but it's not just that that makes this thing so much better in a lot of ways than the Mercy and the Diablo. Let's go for a ride and I'll show you. Close the Lambo doors and ignition. Listen to that. <laughs> and Wizard added the Capristo exhaust system, which just sounds absolutely fantastic on this V12. So of the two cars that I bought on the same day, the Diablo and the Countach, the Countach was mostly working and it's always worked. It's needed some repairs and some sorting because both cars sat for a long time. The Countach, uh, seven or eight years, uh, like 400 miles. This car about a thousand miles in 10 years, but it was the much needier one. It was immediately hemorrhaging fluid from the front suspension, from the steering rack, and it needed a lot of repairs. The tires felt like squares and it had a lot of electrical problems to sort through, which the car wizard was able to do, sort through all the problems with one exception, and that's the moan. At a certain RPM, if I try to make it come alive, it will moan at me. 
Well, if I drive it how a Lamborghini is supposed to be driven, <laughs> you never hear it over that Capristo exhaust system. And of the three cars, the Diablo, I think, is the nicest one to drive in terms of comfort. It has good power. The gated manual is fantastic. Mercy is an e-gear, so not quite as desirable. But what I love about it is mostly the comfort level. The seat's really nice, not in an awkward position. And I feel like I could point this thing to California and drive it all day long and really not be the worst for it. This car is also quite a bit rarer than my 25th Countach, only a few hundred roadsters built, and I'm sure it'll be very collectible and would be a really good investment long term, and I think it's the prettiest one of the three cars, so it really makes sense for me to keep it. Now, reason to sell? Well, it's already worth a lot of money. I could sell this thing and it would pay for both cars and all the repairs that I've done to both of them. So I would own the Countach free and clear and have a little bit of money in my pocket, which is it's crazy to think. Another reason to sell probably is of the three. Oh my God. Uh, of the three, this one's probably the most needy when it comes to maintenance. It is pretty complicated, but not modern in the electronics like the Murcielago. Jeez, that's, that's, oh. Another reason to sell, this is probably the most needy of the three Lambos. It's way more complicated than the Countach, uh, but you know, the Murcielago is more of Audi Volkswagen era of electronics, so it's a little easier to get around and fix. And this one of the three cars has had the most time down at the Car Wizard. It's basically only been a usable car up until very recently, so probably the least rewarding experience. But now that I've gone to all the expense, you know, $30,000 or so to sort it out. Why would I sell it now and let somebody else enjoy the fruit of my money and labor? Really? Another downside is this really silly seatbelt system. It's a double locking one. It's just dumb. But let's move on to the Murcielago, which of the three cars is definitely the least special. There's nothing really that rare about it in an 06 pre-LP Roadster with an E-gear. It's not a gated manual transmission. Another downside, and it is in good condition, but not really, really nice like these other two cars. You can kind of see the interior. Well, it's uh, an interesting color choice, and you can see the wear in the seat. You can see how discolored these panels are, which probably would clean up. I'm missing a vent there. You know, a little bit of wear and tear here and there. And I did have the nose painted from Mako, uh, but it looks fantastic. Now I bought this thing with an exploded transmission from Ed Bullion. He made a 30 or so thousand dollar profit off of me, sourced a salvage transmission, new clutch, got it all in and it didn't work because the salvage transmission was in a car that was wrecked and a part was damaged, but it was still good on the old transmission. But instead of ripping it all out again, because the engine has to come out, it's a massive deal. Uh, we cut a little hole in the trans tunnel right there. Uh, in the fiberglass or whatever it is, the composite, and fixed it that way and then patched the hole, which didn't hurt anything. But I think the entire internet screamed in agony for that car and it's forever, well, kind of marked with that incident, I suppose. But still pretty low miles, 19,000 miles, the highest of the three, but pretty low for one of these. Another thing that's low is the value. This one's worth certainly the least half or a third of the two cars on either side of it. So selling it, I wouldn't get that much of a return, but then if I did sell it, it'd be really hard to replace. So let's take it for a ride. So the Murcielago from a practical standpoint makes the least amount of sense to keep. It'll probably never be worth more than it is right now, or maybe a little more to account for inflation, but I'm never going to see the gains that we're seeing on the gated manual cars like the Diablo and the Countach and well, the gated versions of this. But would I pay double for a gated Murcielago? Absolutely not. That is something that Ed Bullion has concocted up to raise the value of his cars, but it makes absolutely no sense to me because this car with its eager transmission with the new clutch is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> of the three cars, it definitely makes the best noise. It is the most fun to drive. It is not the most comfortable because of the way the seats are cocked towards the inside of the vehicle. To, it's, it's crooked in here, but it is very exciting. And since it is a little bit of a hoopty, I'm not scared to drive it. 
There's no way I can make it worse than what it already is. I guess I could wreck it really bad, but if I did, it's already been painted once. It can be painted again. The interior is already grody. I can take it to car shows. Kids can sit in it, jump in it like a bounce house. I won't care. So this is a car I can actually relax, enjoy, and drive as much as I want. And of the three cars, it is certainly the one that I have driven the most. I've taken it on road trips. I've taken it, well, all over the states. And other than the Countach rally, uh, the Countach hasn't moved all that much, maybe a thousand miles in the last year, a lot of it being the Countach Rally. The Diablo, like I said, has been down a lot getting fixed, so I haven't experienced it that much. But if I'm being practical and I'm being smart, I should sell this car. I absolutely should. But this is the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube. So if you followed all of that, then you've probably deduced that the car I'm getting rid of is dumber. The Diablo BT Roadster primarily for two reasons. Number one, it is worth so much money at this point, even though I think it'll be worth double here in the next five or 10 years or more. The thought of selling it and basically having a Countach for free and having a good chunk of money in the bank was just way too appetizing. And the fact that it took so long to sort this thing out and it really wasn't the car's fault, it was just a process of sorting through, well, 10 years of the car mostly sitting, uh, I didn't really bond with it all that much. I didn't get much time to enjoy it and really fall in love with it. So that makes it the easiest one to sell. But that last drive, uh, I guess there's no changing my mind now. And I sold it to somebody that I changed my mind on before when I first got these cars two years ago, John Tamarian at Curated. If you all recall or saw his video, it's the most watched video where he basically just rants and insults about how terrible I was to deal with. Uh, I didn't think I was gonna be able to afford to keep both cars when I first got them, so I made a deal to sell the Countach, then I changed my mind to the Diablo, and then, well, I ended up keeping them for years, much to his dismay. But he's a very patient and forgiving man after he threatened me on the last car trek. We had a great time together on the Countach rally. He understood my passion for these cars. And uh, well, when it came time for me to let one go, he was the first call. So goodbye Diablo VT Roadster. You are a work of art and I think I'm gonna be sick. Although John did tell me that after he's gone through and sorted the car to their level, which is an insanely high level, that I can come back down and see it again, drive it, experience it before it's offered for sale. So I look forward to that very much and I'll probably be even more sick. So thank you so much for watching.